we'll turn the time over to you for questions. Robert? Uh, probably said you see a city with the story. Oh, it did. You did. You saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Very, Very interesting. <laughs> um, do you care to respond? I mean, do you, would you really profit from, if, assuming the prison moves, would you profit from the development of that, that land? Uh, so if Al, if Al Mansell was to be successful in the bid, I do not profit indirectly or directly. If he was not to get the bid, I would not lose anything directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. Do you own that land? It's GMMN, I think is what it is. We've owned that land for 10 years, uh, four years before I even considered running for the legislature. We plan on having that developed by the end of 2008, but ran into a little problem called the Great Recession. We're now back developing it. We should have that finished by uh, the middle of next year, and that will be at least a year before any development goes on with the prison property. And when I bought that property, uh, ten years ago, there was not even um, there. There'd been discussion about prison relocation, but I never planned on being in the Senate or didn't even know what leadership was in the Senate at that point. Um, is it the, the development you're doing out there? Is it housing units? Is that what it is? yes, it is. It's uh, it's a housing development. It's a cluster housing uh, where we've uh, put a lot of where we've reduced, uh, increased the density uh, of, of the lots, but yet created a bunch of open space. We received some awards in 2004, 2004 from Envision Utah uh, regarding open space because 40% 40, 40 of the per property that we purchased ended up in open space and trails and, and this property is along the river. So Chris said we had one that was right on the Georgia River. It is right on. There. And we actually put a, probably about a million and a half dollars into extending the Jordan River Parkway trail system. Do you, do you know of any other land that you own out there? I, let, me, let me back up. Once the once the house once the housing is in place, you sell the housing. Is that point you? We develop the lots, uh, a builder will buy the lot, and at that point I don't have any more interest in the lot. Okay. And then they sell the lot to a buyer, and, and then we're twice removed from the ownership of that property. So we have probably, probably be about um, you know, 80 to 100 lots left. They're selling uh, very well right now, and uh, we suspect that we'll be through that project towards the middle of next year. The other question I was going to ask you, is there anything else that you own in that area in the general vicinity? No, no, and, and the property we do own is four miles from the prison property. Four miles west of... Uh, right, there's the Jordan River is between us and the prison property. We used to own some property that was on the east side of the river that was very quite adjacent to the prison property. But this is uh, even further away. It's not on 146 South. It's not on uh, even near the freeway. Uh, it's on 13th West. So there's even less of a chance that uh, we'll have any kind of uh, there'll be any kind of impact to our property because of prison relocation or development of the property of the prison. Should that happen, uh, we don't even know if that's going to happen. Senator Jenkins' bill creates the authority to look at that to determine the, the viability, the economic realities of the prison relocation. And one of the options is that it doesn't work. So uh, it, it'll be at least a year before, um, you know, I think before there's really no, it'll be known what'll happen to that property. And then it takes, you have to go through your land use authorities uh, that's Draper, and uh, that's not an easy process. I could take a year or two, potentially. So I just don't see that having any impact. And it's great to have the question asked. You know, it's great to be transparent, but that hasn't even crossed my mind that we would somehow 
uh, have some kind of benefit from pre uh, prison relocation. Having been in that development for 10 years and already, you know, to, we're, we're at the end of that uh, at the end of that project, and we'll finish up here in the next year. Could you comment on the makeup of the board as outlined in Jenkins bill right now? Yeah, the, the Senate president will have the authority to actually appoint members of that board. Uh, there are some there's some language in the bill as as indicated in the City Weekly article uh, that has some very strict conflict of interest uh, language there. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm not going to be appointing anybody that has a conflict of interest. Um, but I think under the circumstances, it's going to be best that um, that I that I, I'm not going to do this uh, alone. I want uh, the majority leader and our minority leader uh, together with myself to make that decision who uh, is appointed appointed to that board. I can't relinquish my position as president, but I can make a commitment to to make that a group decision uh, so that I'm not unilaterally making that decision. I don't know. That site's only about 180 miles from my farm. <laughs> <laughs> you might have a conflict of interest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could joke and say, I may get sent there. That'd be a good yeah. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? But there's been some question about whether the governor should have eight, you know, the ability to appoint eight of the eleven. And then there were senators that concerned that Senator Urquhart mentioned that in the committee yesterday. I have I have really not engaged myself on that bill just because of uh, the some of the relationships I've. I have with regards to the prison relocation, so uh, I, I'm really not been engaged. I really couldn't comment to that. Um, I'm letting Senator, we're just letting that uh, take place and let uh, the public process work there, and I'm not trying to influence in any way.